they're not deceiving you because our next guest is a world-renowned 3D street painter whose amazing drawings have been commissioned and displayed all over the world. Here today with a festive drawing to celebrate our first day of Christmas in July is Tracy Lee Stum. Woo! Wow! <laughs> this is amazing. How in the world do you make something like this? Well, you know, I actually start with a sketch and I think about the size of the piece. This piece is actually 14 feet long, believe it or not, and uh, also where people are going to be standing to take the picture. So they need to be, uh, the piece needs to be viewed through a camera lens and that's really important. So if you walk around the painting, you'll see it looks really different. Wow. So this is flat, but when we look <laughs> at it on screen or through a camera lens, it looks like Pops it is up. 3D. So imagine this takes quite a bit of science and math to, and angles to make it work correctly. It sure does, yeah. I uh, think about, again, the height of the camera, the distance, how big the space is, all of those things. And so. this is just chalk, I have to say it again, because it just looks like it's part of real life. I know. It's unbelievable. It's, how did you do put this one together specifically? Uh, well, this one is uh, very vibrant because I used um, some liquid chalk and I used some dry pastel chalk. Well, let's take and, a look at it. Walk us through it. You came yeah. earlier today and did this. Yeah, so I started with a sketch. I put the drawing down and then I started blocking in the base color. So I create a solid foundation and then I can go back in on top of that and apply chalk and do all the detailing. So the shading comes into play. You want to make sure your shadows are in the right place and the shading is done properly so it looks believable in the real world. And uh, you know, here I am just finishing it up. Wow. Now this, as we said earlier, is 14 feet and the shading and all that that goes into it. One other thing that adds to the distortion is that you were telling us it has to be bigger up top and kind of go smaller. What are some of the other techniques that bring this to light? So cool. That's um, actually because of the camera and the way it's viewed. So the camera actually enlarges things at the bottom and then shrinks things at the background. So when you draw it, you have to draw it the opposite and that way it all comes out normal in the picture. And if you just said, yeah, because when you look at the different angles of how our camera is actually shooting this art you see when you shoot it this way whoa I know yeah, right. and then when you shoot it the <laughs> other way it just looks like we're standing on this by the way this is quite remarkable and this did take you six hours to do but this is one of the smaller pieces of street art that you have actually done what show us some of the other ones sure yeah I've done uh, some large pieces here in New York at the oculus this was for a holiday last year uh, that's like 40 by 20. Oh my God. Um, this one is for Ralph Breaks the Internet, and this is an interactive piece. Again, interaction is key to these 3D drawings. It allows people to be a part of the drawing. Wow, um, and it's all just chalk? It's hard to fathom. Are. Yeah, it is, it is mostly just chalk, yeah. This is me popping out of a champagne <laughs> bottle. And oh this one God. actually incorporated a prop with it, so it's really tricky to see where I start and the illusion stops. What it, is the largest one you've ever done? I've done a 60 by 60 foot piece in the How past. How long did that take? That, that was a fast piece, about three days, but I had a team of artists helping me. Three so. days? That doesn't sound so fast to me. Yeah, I, I know. That, that sounds, <laughs> wow, unbelievable. And now one thing, you know, everybody who does art, not myself, you know, says anyone can do an art, art project and be an artist. I have a feeling you can't just pick this up. Right. Like, you were born with this, right? Uh, I kind of think so, actually, because <laughs> I found this art form by accident and said that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I'm going to try it, and I found out I was good at it. So I just kept going, learning more. The more you do it, the better you get at it, right? So now I understand the rules that govern anamorphic projection, which right. is how this is created. So that's what it's called, anamorphic projection. Yep. So uh -huh. your eyes and your brain really have to work in a different yeah. way that's because right. as you're drawing it, you're not seeing it 3D. You have to step back and do it. And, and, you know, like you said, this is chalk. Most of them are chalk, so we know chalk washes away and disappears, and especially when you're just doing it on the street. However, you have some exciting new projects that you are now doing across the country that are going to be more than temporary. <laughs> Yay! Right, that's right. I'm working on some permanent installations, and those will be happening probably next year, which will incorporate a workshop and educational program for youth. So reaching out to schools and uh, children of all ages, let's say, to participate and be inspired by unusual forms of art. So you can so. teach them how to do it. It's this gorgeous. Is so cool. You have to see this to believe that it's even real. It is beautiful. Okay, let's Thank take a picture. You. Yes, yeah. okay. Where should we go? I'm going to the uh, penguin. You tell us, you know. Uh, up here on the top, maybe. Again? And that was hard up here. I've always okay. wanted to be friends with the penguin. Yeah, okay. there you go. Ooh, this is so fun. Well, for more on this project and all of our other projects, please visit TracyLeeStum.com. Oh, stick Woo. around. Because